Perfect. Hippo. Yeah. What's your experience with tea like? When was the first time you had tea? I had. Well, you know what? It's actually quite recently. Radcom 2. Really? Um, I hadn't really had tea before. Like, I wasn't like a caffeine boy. That's your thing. That, well, that's your people's thing. That's your culture's thing. This is the, the thing. It's like. Tea people are China because they invented it and grew it in the, originally, and England because they stole it, and um, for everyone else just has coffee because yeah. there's, there's more of it in the world, I guess. Coffee is more effective at giving you a caffeine rush too. That I mean, I feel like tea is better that, at doing like giving you the slight boost because if you have a big boost, you're like ah, and you can run right, but. That's like it's for just staying awake a little bit longer. It's an overkill, and mm -hmm. then you you crash real easily afterwards. And then you need a coffee immediately afterwards. You need loads of coffee. You need to keep going with the coffee. With the tea, you can have one tea, and it gives you another couple hours. Mm -hmm. And it's like really nice. The 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 advantage of tea over coffee for me is that okay, I I have a complex where I hate drinking hot things. I just want to guzzle uh, my liquids down as fast as I can. And with coffee, I love iced coffee, but it does change the taste at least a little bit to have it be a cold brew. But with tea, it tastes exactly the same, which is extremely bitter. I, I, I want my tea to be exclusively bitter. I don't really like any sweet tea or anything like that. I don't put any sweeteners in it. See, I, feel, I, feel, I find that the opposite. Like, I like my coffee to be extremely bitter. I don't put like like lattes and, and whatever like special I, milk and loads of sugar. I I, I I I I put I would say half of my coffee beverage is milk, and then like two spoons of sugar. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really a fan of milk in general. It's it's good to have it just to make it a little creamier, but like if you're going with a lot of milk, it's a treat, mm -hmm. and if you're going for a little dash of milk, it's just so that it like it smooths it out and it's not as bitter, mm -hmm. and that's why I usually have a little bit of milk. In, in tea and coffee, and it's really just like a utilitarian thing. Like I don't usually have tea or coffee as like a treat. If I want a treat, I'll get like nice sweet juice, like cranberry juice and, and apple juice and stuff, or you know, a, a, a nice like big, a lovely cold with ice cubes drink of water. Like like I, people, it is weird to be like, my one of my favorite drinks is water. Just a, a nice, like, cold glass of water, but... I get it, I definitely get it. I think yeah. it's because I specifically have run in my entire life never drinking water, because I've, as you can tell, I've not had the perfect diet throughout my life. And so, I've always been drinking, you know, soda or what have you, really, really mostly soda. I, I never liked soda as a kid. Yeah? It was like, I, I, I went to a, a birthday party um, it, a Pizza Hut, and uh, they all got pizza and little 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 baby slices of pizza, and co uh, you know Coca Cola, and I'd never had it before, and I I'd had a bit, and I was like I burped, and I was like oh that tickles me, but it's bad. I don't like the tickling, and and, and every time I've had like a fizzy drink after that, it's like oh oh no. no bad bad stuff. I don't I hate that. So I I have avoided soda. Entirely as much as I can and I only it's like it's like alcohol like I will only drink soda if somebody says Hey, do you want a soda? I've just got a spare one and just go in and no one else wants it and all that. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, I'll drink it but like The appeal of soda I guess is the sugar and I, I can't get past the fizziness yes. for the sugar. I, I would say well the fizziness is definitely part of the appeal Yeah, and that's what I don't like uh, I, I had like fucking sweetened green tea like a, a couple days ago, and that was that was sugary kind of, mm -hmm. and that was nice. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not. A, I don't have a huge sweet tooth. Uh, I, I I mean I, I I really do love soda as much as I hate to admit it. I think it's. I mean, yeah. like, my favorite drink is probably like Barks root beer. Uh, it's just. I think it's mostly probably a nostalgia thing. Uh, I mean, I it, it's kind of weird to say, but I don't even remember the first time I've had soda. It, I would had it for so long, which is definitely not healthy for you. It's definitely not a no. a good thing that I like soda or that I've had it for that long. But uh, it's just sort of like when you're I don't, I don't know how it is in the UK. How, how like big is soda? Because oh, soda is huge here. So, soda is definitely big. Mm -hmm. We don't have Mountain Dew as much. Uh, what the the big ones have always been Coke, Pepsi, Red Bull, and uh, like specific like like fruit sodas like Fanta 
Mm -hmm. uh, which is just orange well, soda. The, 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 the main thing that we have here, too, is Coke and Pepsi. Uh, Red Bull, uh, would you classify that as a soda? I, 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 I don't know what it is. Drink. Oh, it's an energy, yeah. No, yeah. No. I, I don't know anything about energy. We have Lucozade. Do you know what that is? No, I've never heard of that. That is um, an energy drink, which is also well, I I don't know anything about sodas or energy drinks, but it's like that's an energy drink. It's orange flavored and it's like makes you good for like athletics and running, and it's bad because that does it's not good. It's not I. <laughs> I, I've only recently gotten into energy drinks, and I've been kind of been dabbling in it. My entire life has been uh, a, a way to push back the tidal wave of, of, of sleep, and trying to push back my night hours to the point where they're two hours or less. Uh, when I was a little kid, I used to drink soda. Soda for every drink, basically. And then when my throat got you know fucked up from drinking soda too much, I would just have water, which was awful and horrible for me. But I developed almost uh, an addiction, almost. So uh, I set out. I uh, this was actually fairly recently, uh, back like in August. I had uh, gotten my tonsil teeth removed, and when I did that, uh, I couldn't drink soda or really anything for a long time, for like a couple weeks, oh, two yeah, weeks at least. You crashed a big, did you? Uh, I didn't crash super hard. It, it was tough, but I was mainly just in pain for it. But the thing is, I was forced to not drink soda, and so I just had not drinking soda for a while. And I thought, well, if there's any time I'm going to start not drinking soda, it's going to be now. So for up until, I think, oh, it, it was just before I came to Boston for the second time in December, where I had my first Coke again. And uh, I've just been drinking soda pretty regularly since then. But for a while there, I went completely cold turkey and I didn't have any soda. But when I came back to soda, after a while, even though it was like a short time, like four months or so, not even that, like three months, uh, I had realized it's not really the same. Because after you have it not for a while, uh, it kind of really fucking hurts you. Like, it hurts your body to have. Like, like the fizziness kind of like, you can, is you like can feel, me. Yeah. yeah, you can feel it hurting you yeah. in the future. Like, I've heard that as well from other people, that they drink soda all the time, and then when they stop, soda tastes different afterwards. Like, they, they realize that they have been in a certain mode for all that time, they just didn't realize it. You, you, like, you become numb to it. Yeah. yeah. The, the first time, I, I forget the circumstances, I think I was like, I was either sick, or I was just kind of, I might have just been depressed or something, and I was like, you know, fuck it, I, I don't really care, I, I just want some soda. So I got like a, like, got like a, like a, like a medium Coke from Donald or something, and I slurped it, and I was like, why would I have ever done this in the past? Why did I do this? Because it really fucking hurt, and it didn't taste that good. But I just got addicted immediately again. Even though I consciously didn't like it, it was just, oh, I'm, 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 I'm back to this. My yeah. brain just remembered that it that it needed this to survive, and and some, and some soda is, is better than others. Like like root beer isn't that bad acidity wise, and so it's usually fine to drink that acidity wise, not not sugar wise. It's still awful. Uh, but yeah, it, it just was it, it just was crazy going without soda and then realizing how awful it was coming back. But af after I did come back, uh, the caffeine rush that it gave me disappeared. Like, 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 I could not get caffeine out of soda anymore. For some bizarre reason, I do not understand. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, and so I needed something to replace that. That's when I got into tea. I got really huge into iced tea. Uh, I, they don't have iced tea in England, right? It's, it's not a thing. It's, it's, it's like, there's a certain, th like, universalness of, like, a cup of tea after a long day's work and like a biscuit, like a what, mm. what what you would call a cookie, but like we have biscuit, okay. biscuits that like run the, the like the, the the threshold, the gamut between crackers and like chocolate chip Maryland cookies. Okay. So it's like like really chocolatey stuff, and then like really savory stuff. Rich tea biscuits. I don't know if you've ever heard of. Are literally designed like they're, they're one of the oldest biscuits ever. They're literally designed to be dunked in like black tea with milk. Really? Yeah, it's like a very English thing. You you buy the, the the rich tea, you dunk it in, and then it gets a little soggy, and then you eat it. And it's like, it's not like amazing, because like so many like new sugary things have like infected everyone. Mm -hmm. But like, occasionally, where you're just like, 
I just want to munch on something nondescript and just, you know, feel a little, I want to, I want to feel okay, I want to feel like a little, a little normal, just like, yes, I'm, 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 it's like a calming thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice because it's like a little bit sugary, but not really at all. You just dunk it in, it, it, it's tea. It's like, it's like the same relationship like um, tortilla chips mm -hmm. have with s salsa. Yeah, but it's, just, it's like you can eat tortilla chips alone, but like that's not part of the full experience. Yeah, it, the, I fly I fly Alaska Airlines, and in Alaska they always give you a cookie. I forget the name of it, but it, uh, the the subtitle is Europe's favorite cookie with coffee, and so. Well, Europe would mean any with coffee, like France, everywhere except England is like a coffee nation. Well, yeah, but yeah. Talking about biscotti. Yes. Biscotti. Yeah. That's that's Italian, I think. Yeah. I do like those. Those are nice. I've never had them with coffee. It's interesting that you say that it's really normal and the <laughs> entire product is based around milk and tea, because I I think. Milk and tea sounds to me how I assume I iced tea sounds to you. Where it's just, I can't imagine doing that to yeah. tea. Why would you want to why, do that? Why would you want tea cold? Why would you want tea with milk? It, yeah. It's really like, like if you ask somebody for, a, if somebody asks you for a cup of tea, the second question will always be, how much milk do you want? Mm -hmm. Like it won't be, do you want milk? Like people can take it black, but it's not really a thing. Wow. I mean, it's the same thing as like coffee. Like yeah. people can take it black, but nobody really likes it black. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, it, it it's it's just I've I've never it it, it could be in southern United States because there's a lot of like weird European carryovers in the southern United States uh, sometimes. Uh, but uh, where I come from, I I've never even considered that. Uh, Tea, I don't know if I could consider it to be like a like a universal constant that you have iced tea, but I would say it's probably 60-40% of the time. Well, across the world? Well, oh uh, no, that you have iced tea in America. As, a, as, a, as opposed to hot tea? Yeah. 60-40. Oh, I would assume more, the more iced tea, because I, I, I hear that, it, you know, I hear it all the time, like people just have tea in like plastic bottles, which is weird. Tea is like... You either buy it from a hot place, like Starbucks has tea, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have to. It's England. They, they wouldn't. You wouldn't get away from, with having like no tea. Mm -hmm. But I don't go to places like that, so maybe they don't have tea. I'm not sure. Well, they have they have tea here. So if they have tea here, then they almost certainly have tea there. Why in Starbucks? Yes. Oh, okay. Then they definitely do. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say. The Starbucks tea is probably some of the worst tea I've ever had in my entire life. Hmm. Uh, that is unless you get a very specific type of tea they have, because they, they, you, you can just get normal black tea. And I do not recommend it. I do not think it tastes very good at all. It just tastes uh, a little bit too sweet, which is going to be, uh, well, two things. That's going to be funny based on what I say next. Uh, after this point though, which is, I love tea to be as bitter as possible. That's why milk sounds so weird to me, is because that would just not really contribute to the bitterness of it. I want to well, taste yeah, this, dirt. This, this David's tea is very bitter, and the tea that I have is like more mild, mm -hmm. and it's really just, I guess it is just like less flavor, but I'm not sure how to explain it. Mm -hmm. Cause, well, cause it's more like a... Of like a, well, the tea I like is just, my dad has called it builder's tea. Mm -hmm. Because he works in building stuff, and he is like a working class kid growing up in London. And uh, builders, uh, when they're building stuff, they, they, you know, stick the kettle on, uh, the person like at the house, like you're, you're, you're repairing my patio, I don't fucking know. And the person would put on the, the, the cup of tea for them. And it'll be like, uh, yeah, it's just sort of a communal thing, like a nice thing to do for them. Mm -hmm. Would that be like a thing you do to, like, if builders come to your house, do you offer them, like, coffee? Or do you offer them, like, lemonade or well, what? Well, here's the thing. I do not have any first-hand experience with this. Because I've lived in an apartment uh, where I do not have builders at my house, basically, ever. Uh, 
Also, the term builder sounds just like a Minecraft term to me at this point. I, I, I've never used, like, do you mean like like a plumber or someone like fixing well, yeah, the, like... A, a workman, a guy, yeah, a guy yeah. coming around to build or fix something. The only type of those people I've had are moving guys. And for moving guys, uh, you know what? Thinking, every time there's been mover guys at my apartment or in my house, we have given them iced tea with a lemon in it. I don't know if that's a that's a. It's really know, just a like a, thing. just a nice thing to give them something refreshing because yes. they're working. For we, we 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 definitely do have the custom of making things for the for the for the builders. Yeah, but the, the reason it's called builders tea is because it's very easy. You just put a tea bag in like you got ten builders. I don't know. There's mm -hmm. a lot of builders. Mm -hmm. Like you get ten cups. You throw a tea bag in each of them. You pour hot water and then you ask them what how much milk or sugar they like. Mm -hmm. And it's just like very easy, quick way to just give them some energy and some hot. Stuff to go down their throat. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's like it's like if you it, and from that I think spawns like like this seems like the sort of thing like no offense but it's like seems kind of hipstery with like the the um, you know you have to pour the thing in the, the little totally and then it's 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 not. It's like the thing you go yeah. out of your way to get, and it's not th like a daily, like, oh, I just need my tea for the day, I need my coffee for the day. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not that huge of a difference, like, like time-wise. You, you just boil it, and then you put it inside the thing, and once it's done percolating, you just stamp it out. Yeah, but it, you, I wouldn't expect to see things like that in, like, um, an office. Yeah, it would. I, all, it would almost almost it, it, always be it's a, a home thing. Machine. It's a home thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a home thing. It's a thing you go and buy. Like, oh, look at this nice tea. All these different types of special teas and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely a, a, a sort of you're right, hipstery. Uh, what's the, the word? Hipstery slash middle class sort of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it's it's definitely what's the word I'm looking for? It's it, it's a luxury. It's it's not yeah. supposed to be a, a, a it's builder's a, it's, tea. Yeah, it's it's a luxury rather than a staple. In England, it's a staple. Like, you you just have tea. If you go to work, you drink tea in the morning. I mean, nowadays it's probably a lot different because coffee from America and other places like Starbucks and and Costa Coffee and and stuff like co coffee has. Because it's popular everywhere else, obviously big things from other countries come over here and mm -hmm. set up shop, and now a lot of people like coffee, and a lot of people like coffee because the coffee places from other countries have a lot of sugar and stuff, and it's like, it's less English. Like, I don't, I don't like the, the idea that I'm like trying to be old-fashioned, but I do sometimes prefer like mm -hmm. simple stuff that I know. I mean, mm -hmm. it, maybe it would be better to have coffee all the time. But at the moment, it's like tea is implied, but coffee is generally the prefer the preference. Mm -hmm. I feel like at least among my generation, my the generations above, they're all like tea people. Mm. I definitely prefer tea over coffee, even though I probably ingest more coffee. That this has not been evident at Radcon Three, of course, because I've been drinking uh, shit. Swill, yeah. uh, modern day Mountain potions. Dude. Yes, uh, but at my own house, I drink a lot of coffee, and the reason I like tea is because, again, you can get iced tea for very easy, and it will not change any of the experience of the drink. Much like how uh, iced coffee will sometimes change it. With iced tea, again, I want the bitterest thing you can get. So really, the taste of being bitter. This is supposed to be slightly orange flavored. Is it? Did you taste any orange in it? Probably not. I've, I mean, I've tasted something. It has bitterness and it has like a fruit-ish, but I yeah. don't know what fruit. I, yeah. I couldn't tell which fruit. Yeah, but, but it's, uh, the point is, is that it's a bitter thing that you only get like a little bit of taste out of. And I love this, because I love to drink drinks fast. I love to guzzle them down. Uh, there's there's a couple of videos out there of me, I think posted on Instagram or something, uh, of me guzzling down like four glasses of water in like two minutes. That's just a normal thing for me. I just love to do it. And so, with with, with coffee, it, it, I, I make it sound like iced coffee is completely different than normal coffee. It's not really. But it's just that iced tea is just so more pervasive and more easily accessible than I think iced coffee. Like like the only place I can really I mean you can get iced coffee anywhere you can get 
coffee. But uh, there's just like a Starbucks under my house, so it's easier to just go there and just order. Oh, oh I, I forgot to mention, the Starbucks tea that I think is good, which is odd that I said I was complaining about it being sweet earlier, is infused tea. Do you have infused tea where you come from? I think it might just be a, Star Bra a Starbucks brand thing. I, I'm, what does it mean to be infused? Uh, well, in Starbucks, it means you put fruit in the tea pitcher, and then you just let it soak there for a little while, and then all the, 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 the fruit juice will kind of permeate throughout the tea, and it'll become slightly fruit-tinted. Um, uh, no, I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in, in Starbucks specifically, they put a lot, of, a lot of sugar in it, and I usually say no sugar, but if you just have the tea with the, the slight hint of peach or mango or whatever, it tastes fucking sick. Tastes dope because uh, I, I want it to be bitter, and it still is bitter. It still retains all the bitterness, but it just has a stronger flavor. If you get like a, like a, like a bitter tea, but like it has like a like a, like a big big flavor built into it, you can kind of start losing that that just stark just dirt feel. Mm. And uh, mm. that's it. I'm out of tea. I've still got a bit. It's quite bitter for me. Too much? A little bit. I mean, it's nice, like, I, but I can't, like, I, I drink quite slowly anyway, and usually it gets cold by the time I'm finished with it, but mm. I, I've just learned to enjoy things hot and cold. Yeah. Have you ever had iced tea? I think I've had iced tea, like, mm. from a can. Yeah, what, uh, well, yeah, what did you think of it? It was... Well, was it a gross perversion, or was it just something else? It just feels like something else. Like, it doesn't feel like tea, but done wrong. It just feels like a drink that is different and, and nice. Like, I liked the taste. I didn't think of it as tea. I just thought it was, like, kind of sweet and had a flavor. Um, yeah. I, there, there's a lot of... It, it might just be me. Well, it was iced green tea, I should say. Yeah. Uh, but... I, I should mention... Just to restart the clip. I get I get unsweet iced tea whenever I can, and there is a pervasive culture in the United States when you get southerner, uh, so, southerner, that you have sweet tea, and sweet tea is not just sweetened iced tea; it is its own beast. So sweeten tea and sweet tea are different. Sweet tea is part lemonade, and it's fucking horrible. It's disgusting. It's way too much sugar, and I don't think lemonade and iced tea go well together at all. I think it's a disgusting perversion. But it's fucking everywhere down south. Yeah. yeah. I think I've seen. Well, I've, I feel like I've definitely seen like t iced tea with lemon. That that, that 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 that's Sweden. That's, that, that's Sweden. Yes. Hmm. Odd. Yes. Do you have any equivalent over there? Is that is that a um? Well, in terms of tea, yes. Do you have any, Do you have any sweet tea in England? We do have lots of teas. I'm just not for, like no knowledgeable. Like I guess, like I said, Radcon Two is when I started drinking tea for like mm -hmm. reasons of like getting energy. Whereas before, I would just rely on nothing. I would never had caffeine. Um, oh, I just relied. So I just weird. I just relied on like waking up well and having a good sleep schedule. But you know, fuck that. Mm -hmm. But um. Like there's there's that we have green tea, we have like like cinnamon tea for stuff. My parents have like certain teas for like like this is good for digestion, this is good for relaxation, this is good for getting awake. This is this is good for that and this. Um, but they're all horrible things that you have hot. And black tea is the only one you have with milk. I see why. I don't know. I think that was just because it was the first one, and you, I don't. I don't think the other ones work well with milk. Because okay. the thing about black tea is that it isn't that this bitter, um, and it's kind of like not flavorless, but like it's got a. If you ever eat a rich tea biscuit, it tastes like tea, but in a biscuit form. It's kind of strange how they can do that. You think of like the taste of a rich tea biscuit and a cup of normal black tea with milk, and it's like. One is a biscuit and one is like liquid. Like they've had mil like hundreds of years to perfect that formula, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's not supposed to be a tasty thing. I think I feel like I think it's just supposed to be warm, liquid, with energy in it, and it just happens to have that taste. It, we didn't make tea with the express like purpose of like 
like um, creating a, a tasty snack. Yeah, like it, it was just we we got. I mean, I don't know the history. I'm I'm like just guessing at this point. But you know, we got tea from other places. We brought it here, and it was nice. And we we just found a preference, and it was stuck mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> what? It's sick. Is it sick? Yeah, it's nice. I love I love learning the history of mundane things like that. I love learning the history of shit that you just use every day and you don't even register it as ever have been invented ever. Yeah, like that. that I I want to I, I should like Google like actually why, mm -hmm. but like that's the feeling I get from just drinking it. Like it doesn't feel like you know like a tasty thing. Mm -hmm. So that's the the conclusion I have to draw. I think definitely over time, there's been less of a of, of, of a focus on making things have like a like a like a practical purpose, and more on making it taste good. At, at least in food. Yeah, it's because it's like so much choice. Like you have your, yeah. your basic. Ba back stuff. in the day, there was just you know. Back in the day, no, nobody nobody had had anything like tea, so it must have felt really tasty compared to like just well what water water. Well, it, I, I mean, back in the fucking no. day, people drank like beer basically mm -hmm. as the liquid mm -hmm. and water was used for cleaning but you know that's 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 sort of like a viking thing it's like a norse mythology but also real and actually true mm -hmm. that they would have in order to stop like cholera and stuff they would drink beer only and all the children would drink beer out only as like their only like liquid how do humans ever get anything done uh, well, I mean, those those people like 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 East European, like North Norsemen, uh, Saxons and Angles and, and Normans, and they would be like, they drink beer all the time, and they they would fucking rape and pillage, lol. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, they were beer, beer, beer is just good for being rowdy and taking over things. And mm -hmm. once you have enough things, then you have to settle down and stop drinking beer and be like a government. Mm -hmm. I, I, how, how different do you think the Vikings would be if they had tea instead of beer? Probably not as successful in the conquest. Well, that, that was the thing. Like, China had tea. Mm -hmm. And they invented, like, China teacups. Mm -hmm. And they liked tea a lot. They were okay at, you know, war. But they had the different types of tea. I'm talking out of my ass, so I don't really know anything. I was too for a while. I don't know anything about TAs. Like I just, black I tea. just, I just like thinking about what the possibilities are, because like the way things, you know, you, you observe the world in certain ways, and like uh, you think about things, and you can't be bothered to look it up on Wikipedia because that's boring. Mm -hmm. You just like it's like a mental exercise. Like I wonder how that came to be. Maybe probably because of this and that, and yeah. you know, the way I understand humans work, and what they had and what they would do. I don't know. Tea's good. Tea's great. I'm gonna come clean here. Uh, I am totally in love with the idea of becoming a tea hipster. I don't really know anything about tea. Actually, just this is all just observation. But I love the idea of becoming that guy who just has a ton of tea in his house. Yeah. I like that. It's it's a nice... The other day, one of the first days of RadCon, I was brewing some tea here in the house, and I think you might have been in the house, but I think, you know, everyone else was out in the snow doing something. And I loved being the mom of the PCP in that moment, just kettling tea in the house, watching the boys outside, you know, doing their roughhousing. Yeah. And then they would all pile back in and I'd be like, tea's ready, and I would pour them some glasses. It was great. It was a magical experience. And it was my yeah. favorite time of this entire con. I enjoy moments like that sometimes. Yeah. Where I'm like... You know what? I'm gonna be a responsible one. And I'm gonna like I'm gonna wash up or I'm gonna I'm gonna clean first. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna be the one that people are like, oh look at that responsible lad. You remember Redcon 2 when I started cleaning like crazy? Yeah. I do. That was cool. That was yeah, really that dope. was cool and also inspired me to get, like follow you. Mm -hmm. Because it's just like uh, he he can't be the mom. I wanna be the mom. Everyone this ties back into watery advice. Everyone always thinks, Oh god, I don't wanna clean. This is gonna take so much. My room's so dirty, I don't wanna start this. But when you get in that groove of cleaning your room, it just it, it, it's a snowball effect oh, yeah. of pleasure in your mind. One, one of my favorite things is like when I when I need to like sort shit out, like when I have like a, a drawer that I haven't opened in like ten years and I'm like, I need space, I need to open this drawer, take everything out, lay it all on the floor, make a big mess and then sort through it, get a bin bag, 
and uh, like, like, and then all the right. I don't want that. Throw it in the way. Make a pile of things I want to keep, and then sort through that later. Like sorting it out, and, like getting a big thing of crap that you don't want, mm -hmm. and then throwing that out, and then oh, there's so much room. There's so much room now, yeah. and it's all because I worked and I put a podcast on in the, in the background, and I just sat in my room and on the floor, shit sifting through like old papers of school stuff that I, mm. I don't know. That's always the best when you find an old forgotten bin of old school stuff because there will always be like 60% school stuff and then 40% weird offbeat things that you forgot you would even consider in your life. Yeah, like loads old, of doodles. Yes, loads of doodles. I, I, there, there's always in school books, there's always tons of Kirby doodles on the side of math homework. There's always stuff like that. I just love finding it again. Uh, I remember, I, I completely forgotten that my family even had this, but they had a storage unit because we, you know, we live in an apartment and not have that much space, so we got a storage unit. And we had gotten it like six years ago or something. I completely forgotten that we had been paying for it for so long. And so I went with my mom to clean out the other day because we eventually started stop paying for it and we didn't want to use it anymore. Uh, and I found so many uh, charming slash precious things I used to have. Yeah. It's, it's that feeling of like, you pick something up, like it's sort of like maybe there's stuff going on, maybe it's like quiet and like people are, people have moved into another room and they're doing something else and you're just standing there still looking at this thing and you're like, oh yeah. And you, you're just taking as much time as you can or as you like, just mulling it over. And then, you know, then you come back to reality and you think, okay, what do I actually, what should I do with this? Mm -hmm. And it's just sort of that little moment where you're just engrossed in whatever it is you found. I, I, while like the, the rest of the world sort of blanks out for a bit. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. I think, I think, well, I know it was homes that got me interested in really dense bedrooms. And uh, I've always been, even today, after I was inspired by Homestuck, a very minimalist guy. I've only ever had like five posters in my room max, and that was after years of having nothing on my walls. I would just have a desk, a bed, and that was it, basically. But uh, in recent years, uh, I've been buying souvenirs, which is something that I never even considered uh, when I was a little kid. I would never. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with a, a finger puppet of Abraham Lincoln? Nothing. I don't have a use for that. But recently, I've been getting stuff because I just want. I have a terrible memory. This is probably the reason I got a handwritten journal too. I have a terrible memory that will always fail me, no matter what. I, I have a hard time remembering what I did earlier in the day. It's kind of insane. That's the reason I have my journal. I've like had a couple like uh, like reason like souvenirs for that ex reason as well. Like I always like the idea. Like whenever I found mm -hmm. those, like oh yeah, I have a spoon collection. Mm -hmm. I go to sp places and I get the spoon of the town. Yeah. And, like why do they do that? And I guess it was just because it was popular because people did it at some point. And now you can go to most souvenir shops in like touristy areas. And, and get like a spoon with like a little handle that has like a symbol of the town that you're in. Well, that's not a thing here, but that sounds cool. That, in, in certain European places, it is. It is a thing here because Dave Masterson collects spoons too. Oh, I, I I've never heard it before in my life. Yeah, it's like it's like just like or like collecting coins from places you've been, or collecting what yeah, I what yeah. I do is collecting a good keychain because there's always a keychain mm -hmm. about yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, whether it's a cheap thing or a nice thing. It's just a little reminder that I was in a shop and now I remember the whole day that I spent when yes, I was in that shop. Yes, yes. It's just it's, like, oh, remember that time where we, there was, like, it was night time and I looked up and there was stuff? That's what this reminds me of. Isn't it crazy how you can be thinking all day, God, what did I do that one trip to Mexico? What, what, what did I do? I have no idea. That just doesn't light up the synapses in your brain. But then you hold some sort of item, some like I don't know, some stupid novelty overpriced rock that you got or something. And you think, oh, I remember exactly why I did this day. I, rem I remember how I got to the beach. I remember how I stayed in the pool that one time. I, I remember all of that. There's, there's a very specific thing like that that I have, where I was, uh, I was at a goonery, which is like a, what is the thing? But um, I was on a beach, and it was like a beach with like big rocks, mm -hmm. just big rocks. And I was holding this rock, and I was like, we had the, the uh, well, I should explain. It's like um, a, a disabled group like thing, scout camp, summer camp for the disabled kids, and I'm a volunteer helper there. And I was with my group, and we were sitting down after lunch, just you know, on the beach, and we had some 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 of the kids around, like you know, going her playing with rocks, and I was just playing with them. 
and he, one of these kids had bought at the souvenir shop a little stamp. And they're like a little stamp that you could stamp on things. And he stamped the rock I was holding. And I was like, ooh, I'll keep that. And I'll have that rock still. And I was like, I look at that, and just because it's a rock with a marking on it, I remember that whole day because it was just like, he stamped it. it. Now it is a rock that has like a marking of history on it, instead of just a rock. That's it's magical. It's fucking great. I'm not joking when I say that's magical. That's incredible. That's really sweet, and I'm gonna cry now. I, I, I don't really have anything. This is an extremely new thing where I want to get souvenirs. And a, 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 a thing that's less revolutionary uh, to the probably, the, well, not the souvenirs were revolutionary, but something normal that I completely eluded from my life or, you know, excluded, was taking pictures ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never used to do that. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I've traveled a lot in my life, uh, and I, I would never take any photos. I would always be forced on them by my mom, and I would be like, ah, fuck, I don't care. I, 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 I'll, I'll remember this later. Yeah, like, but, then, but, then, but then you look at her Facebook, and you see pictures of you, and you're like, oh. Yeah, and, yeah, and you're like, I don't even remember this photo. Like, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm doing that. There's, there's so many things I've completely forgotten. Like I, like, I had forgotten that I had ridden a donkey in Mexico one time. And I only remember that because on Facebook one day, there just there I was on a donkey in a poncho and a huge oversized sombrero, and I was like eight, and it was hilarious. It was insane. I completely forgot about it. So now uh, I've been trying to take photos on every trip that I go to. This trip in particular is the main one because I've gone to, I've gone here to Boston two times, and I've taken maybe like eight photos between two trips. So basically nothing. Uh, but now it's almost. Too much that I take out my camera for almost everything. Uh, I almost have to find a balance and I'm in between yeah. the extremes. But I think the best thing is like minimal but like potent memory capsules yes. because if you like say you live stream your entire life, you'll never look at it back. Mm -hmm. uh, pictures like a snapshot is is better, and even better than that is like writing down in a journal what happened during yes. the whole day, which is why I do that and why you now do that. Well, yes. I don't know whether you copy me, but. What I didn't know. I you didn't know doing that. No. I thought I'd mentioned it at some point. But no. Yeah. It's it's a cool you, thing to do. You you invented the handwritten journal. I, I invented it. Yeah. Uh, I, I I had gotten it from CGP Gray, who had oh, said yeah. that you know you got to write everything you have in your life so you can have it be a, a reference point to go from. Uh, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, I've been falling off the bandwagon of writing my journal very uh, hard. I mean, we've had a couple really busy days. I yeah. at the time. Yeah. I'm probably going to forget a few things, unless I write them I'll write after this. It's always so hard. It's always so hard to, to find time, at least for me. Because I'll always be, especially on trips, which is when I need them the most, I'll always have a busy day and then I'll just be like, alright, time to go to bed. Oh god, I have to write with my hand for a couple of hours. Yeah. Or only a couple of hours, you know, like an hour. And uh, I'll never want to do it, but it's really important, and I really am remiss like, not to do it more. It's really important, even if I'm like, oh, I don't know, by the end of it, I'm like scribbling down, I'm like, and then this happened, and then that happened. Yeah. Even just enough of, just just that, like, in order. Like, part of the, part of the memory is remembering how tired I was when I wrote it. Mm -hmm. And so, it's so good, to, even just in Radcon 3, just looking back at the last day, I'm like, oh yeah, oh, whoa, whoa lots yeah. of stuff happened. Yeah, I, I, I will have, I, I, I've told you this off air, uh, that I write my journal from the perspective of someone who doesn't know who I am, specifically so that no matter in my, who, like what point in my life I'm in, I'm reading it, it will not, it will have all the context it needs to stand alone and I can remember everything. Where, like, I'll explain stuff like, who is Ethan? Like, I think in my brain that I'm always going to know who Ethan is, but what if, I don't know, we fire something and then I, I don't talk to him for 40 years and I want to read back this journal. Something like that. Where it's just, I, I want to be able to always remember uh, exactly what's happening. And a lot of the time I'll reference, like, I'm really tired, like I don't want to do this, but yeah. I know that I should. Part of that is the experience. Yeah. <sighs> Tea time's good. This Tea time's good. good. This was nice. Yeah. We don't need the news. We are the news. Do you want to call it off? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done too. Two time with Hippo. Hey. Sick.